coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on TBP Nation, man. I appreciate the love. Boom, 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 boom. Appreciate the support. We out here, man. 33 years. 33 years of prison stores. We rolling. We in the mix. We trying to get it. We on it. Ten toes down. We coming. We coming. Cannot be denied, man. Big love to everybody out there in TBP Nation, man. Big love to everybody, man, who are... Uh, Support me, support this movement, support this uh, platform. Man, uh, 33 years, man, 12,065 plus consecutive days in the belly of the beast, man. But I'm out here. I'm humbled. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. And um, I'm thankful for TBP Nation, man, for getting behind me in this movement, man. So let's go. Let's get it. 150K, 2024. That's my, that's my goal. That's my motto. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's get it. Let's go. It ain't nothing to do it, man. It ain't nothing to do it but to do it. All you got to do is tell two or three people, man, to go sub to this channel, man, and we on our way. Um, I appreciate everybody who comes in the morning mud. I appreciate everybody who locks in at 6 for like, share, comment, and subscribe for the videos. Everybody coming to late night Twitch. Everybody on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Pure Deliciousness, uh, Banky Pam Prison Fitness. We out here, man, 2024. Stay tuned for the book, the cruise, the book tour, the uh, meet and greets, everything in 2024. TBP Nation stand up, man. We out here. We trying to do this thing, man. We trying to help these young kings and queens, man, um, from throwing their life away. As I always tell you, misinformed people. Misinformed people, and we we trying to give them the right information so they can make the right decision. So everybody who's down with that movement, everybody who rock with me, man, peace and love to you, man. I appreciate you each and every day. Uh, man, today I don't know. I just finished the conversation, so that conversation got me on this thought pattern, and um, I just wanted to speak about this. Uh, man, listen. This is the difference between prison and the streets. Prison and the streets. When you walk out of your cell in prison, the, 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 the main thing about that is this. When you walk out of that cell, after you have become aware of what's going on in prison, it is uh, omnipresent to you that when you walk out of that cell in prison, you don't know if you ever going to walk back in that cell. That is a fact. That is a fact. And I know a lot of people that ain't never been to prison say that's the same thing when I leave my house, but not exactly. When you leave your house from the streets, it's a good chance that you're going to make it back home. It's a good chance. It's, the chances are greater. When you walk out of that prison cell, you don't know if you're ever coming back to that cell because it's danger, it's violence, it's and it's in a small, confined environment. So the chances are greater for you to be caught up into some foolishness, caught up into some violence when you walk out of that cell. You got a lot of dudes in prison that don't come out of their cell. I know that may be hard for y'all to believe, but that is absolutely true. You got a lot of dudes that would not come out of their cell for nothing. You got jokers that won't come out of their cell to take a shower. And usually you'll get two cell partners that try to match up. They both of them on the same type of time where they so scared, they not coming out. They got resources. They got money from home. People send them money. They don't come out. They sell, man. They don't come out unless the people come get them to get them out. Dudes don't even want to come out to get in that water. <laughs> They'll put the curtain up and take turns, uh, take, uh, 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 turns uh, bird baby. And they sell, man, because they know what's out there. It's danger out that cell, man, when you walk out of that cell. And a lot of people don't understand that because they take prison for granted and they be like, ah, oh, man, ain't nobody going to bother me. Ain't nobody going to mess with me. Man, you don't know what's going on up in there. You got jokers in there. They got so much stuff going on in their mind, man. Anything can happen on any given day and you ain't did nothing to nobody. You ain't got no beef with nobody. You ain't had no altercation, no miswords, no nothing. But this is a possibility in prison, man. And you got to know that and you got to understand that when you walk out that cell in prison, man, 
Ain't no guarantee you coming back up in that cell ever again. Ain't no guarantee you going nowhere again besides wherever, you know, the afterlife is. It, it's just no telling. I done seen dudes come out their cell and uh, never make it back to their cell again. You know, by way of losing their life, by way of getting hurt to the point where they had to go to the hospital. And once they went to the hospital and whatever happened to them, whatever type of surgery they had to have, whatever type of emergency procedure they have to have, when they come back, they go back to the, to the uh, administration hospital and then they get shipped up off the compound. They get shipped up off the compound, you know, and um, those are the lucky ones. Those are actually the lucky ones. So I know in my mind by watching these things from years and years and decades and decades, I know when they left their cell, they never had that thought in their mind. Most of them. Some dudes left their cell know they had beef on the yard. So they know that was a possibility. But most people who left their cell never thought that they would never see their cell again. Never thought they would see how they left their stuff. I left this on the bed. I left this on the desk right here. They'll never see that again. They'll never see. That's reality in prison. Dudes in prison is dying every day, man. They just are publicizing that to y'all out here in the public on news and stuff. They are dying every day in prison. Dudes are getting killed. Dudes are ODing. Dudes are committing suicide. Every day in prison, these things are happening. But y'all don't hear about it. The only people who hear about it is who family member they are. And they never get the true story. They never get the exact right story of what actually happened to their loved one. They don't get that because the administration is not going to get that out to them because they're going to be liable for lawsuits. But every day in prison, man, somebody is dying, man. And um, it's a danger out there lurking every time. Do you know what it feels like? Can you imagine what it feels like to walk out of your door every morning and saying to yourself that somebody might try to kill me today? I don't think that's the first thought on people's mind when they leave to go to work in the morning. When they leave to go to the store in the morning, when they leave to go get gas, when they leave to go visit some, I don't think that's the thought. That has to be your thought in prison. That has to be your thought in prison in order to survive. You got to say when you walk out of that cell door, somebody might try to kill me today. What am I prepared to do to make sure that they don't? To make sure that they don't succeed. This is the type of life you live in in prison. I lived this type of life for 12,065 plus consecutive days, man. And y'all wonder why my hair is gray. And y'all say, oh, you got gray hair. Yeah, like I'm in birds. No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I'm actually, uh, you know, proud of it. Because I know how I got it. I know how I got it. I got it being well. I got it being prepared. I got it being ready for whatever was coming to me. Does that mean I won't worry? No, I was worried. That's why I got the gray hair. But I survived it, you know, and I was lucky to do that. I'm, I'm not extraordinary. I'm not different than nobody else. I bleed, I die, I hurt, I feel pain like everybody else. But it is a process that is draining on the body, man. It's draining on the soul to have to live like that every day. It's draining, man. It's draining, man. So when y'all ask me, why do I smile every day or why I always smile on camera? Because I'm not living like that no more. When I walk out the house right now, I know it's danger out there. I know people out here that's crazy. I know it's some unstable people out here. But I don't feel that weight on me that I felt in prison walking out of that cell. Because I know people in prison got a different type of, you know, mental. They got a different type of mental, man. I can walk out to my cell in prison and I ain't, like I said, I ain't do nothing to nobody. But dude, look at me. He don't like me. He ain't never been liking me. But I have no knowledge of this. But today, he got some bad news. Today, he feeling fed up. Today, he feeling like I'm sick and tired of this. So I may be his target. I may be the one that he wants to just, you know, crash out on. But if I ain't prepared for that, then I'm going to be a victim. If I am prepared for that, then I'm going to do whatever it takes for me not to be a victim. 
But I know that these are possibilities in prison. And a lot of dudes get hurt. A lot of dudes get killed. A lot of dudes lose their life because they did not consider this as a possibility in prison. Because they went on the assumption, I ain't do nothing to nobody. Ain't nobody going to do nothing to me. I don't bother nobody. Ain't nobody going to bother me. I don't owe nobody. Ain't nobody going to approach me with no foolishness. I ain't said nothing slick to nobody. Why would somebody bother me? And that's the perception that we use out here on the street. And it works better out here on the street than it do in prison because people don't need a reason in prison. The reason they already have is because they're miserable with their own life, with their own conditions, with their own circumstances and situation. And they want to take it out on somebody and it might be you. It might be you. So you have to be prepared for that, man. You have to be prepared for that. And I'm telling you right now, that's a horrible way to live. It was for me. It was for me. So I understand why people come out here, they got PTSD and they nervous and people make noise around them and they turn around and all that. So when you all see people doing that and they been locked up a long time, it ain't nothing to laugh at. It, it, it's a survival tactic. It's a survival tactic, man. And once I came to the realization of that in prison, man, you know that uh, I ain't got to do nothing to nobody to be in an altercation. I ain't got to be beefing with nobody to uh, have an a, a incident. Then I started moving different. You know, I started moving with purpose. I started moving knowing that, you know, I'm in a different environment, man. They don't care nothing about me at all. I'm just another person. I'm just another number. I'm just another inmate, another convict, another dude doing time. But I got to preserve my life while I'm in here because I want to get back out. You know, and when you got that type of mentality, man, that's when you would do anything it takes to get home. You know, and a lot of people don't make it home. It's a lot of them don't make it home, man. I don't think I was meant to be out here. I don't think it's a lot of dudes that came out during the time that I came out and a little bit before and a little bit after. I don't think we was meant to be out here. I don't think that was in their plan. But thank God it wasn't in God's plans because God had different plans. And for the most part, every dude that came out with me, before me, or after me have stayed the course because they realized what they was lucky and fortunate enough to get out of. Because Virginia had the lowest uh, uh, parole percentage in the country, man, for over three decades. So when we had that little wonder, those dudes who got out of that little wonder, man, I think they feel blessed. I think they feel fortunate. I think they feel... Uh, humble to have made it out, man, because it wasn't intended for us to get out. And I'm one of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it was intended for me to get out. But, you know, like I say, you can make a plan, but God could have a plan and then your plan ain't no good. You know, so so I know what the county is, man. And I, 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 just, I just feel for my brothers that's in there right now that they're going through that every day, man. They're going through that struggle. They're going through that pressure. It's pressure, man. It's pressure every day in prison, man. It's pressure. You know what I'm saying? You sleeping with somebody that you don't really know. You in prison in a cell with somebody you don't even really know. Even if you like them, even if y'all done got cool, even if y'all done came to an understanding, you don't really know this person. And that person can wake up tomorrow and be on something different and you in a world of trouble because you locked in that cell if you're not prepared to defend yourself. Against a person that you've been breaking bread with and talking to and eating with every day. Now today he wants to kill you. Because he got some personal issues going on. Who does that? People in prison do that. They do that, man. They do that. You walk out the cell and go use the phone. And somebody else say they were supposed to use the phone. And you saying, nah. And it's a miscommunication. And they walk away. And then you go ahead and use the phone. And then they come back while you're using the phone. And come behind you and stab you, man. They do that in prison. Oh, I'm next in the shower. No, it was me. Man, what? Yeah, I was behind uh, Joe Blow. Woo -woo. I go ahead. And you in the shower and do rip the curtain open and start stabbing you, man. This is the type of life dudes living in prison. This is the type of life that you got to survive. This is the type of life that you will sign up for when you forfeit your, your uh, 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 freedom off of these streets, man. It's not, <laughs> it's not what you think it is, man. It truly is not what you think it is, man. 
So, you know, when you leave that cell in the morning, man, all bets is off. All bets is off. I used to leave my cell. I used to look around at everything how it was. Where I left this? Where I left that? Because I knew. I knew this might be the last time I see this. I knew that because it was always that possibility. It might be the last time I see this. And that's real, man. That's real as it get when you talking about this prison life, man. You know what I'm saying? It's real, man. And then, like I say, we talking about when you leave yourself. But there's always a threat inside yourself because you're not in there alone. And you don't know what's going on in this joker's mind. Dudes go to the phone and get dear Johns. And dudes go to the phone and find out their wife was somebody else. Dudes go to the phone and find out their mom died. Dudes go to the phone and find out their child was in a car accident. Who closest person to them? You. Because you in the cell with them. So all that irritation and frustration and hurt and pain, they can't get rid of that. And there ain't nobody to unleash it on. But you. Because you right there. So it's a threat inside and outside. All the time. All the time, man. Yeah. I can't tell you how many uh, people I saw in prison. I could not put a number on it. How many people I saw in prison get attacked, get assaulted, um, you know, get ran up on that was unaware. Unaware. And it had no clue it was coming. Had no reason to believe it was coming. Not, not, you know, no reason at all. But it happens, man. So that's why dudes in, that been in prison is so paranoid. I'm paranoid to this day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know that by now. There's something wrong. But that that's the reason. Because you have unsolicited attacks in prison, man. You have... People that just roll up on you for no reason. None that you know of. Somebody may just don't like you and they want to get rid of you. You may be getting money in the park. You may be in their way, as they would say, and they want to get rid of you. They want you gone. They don't want you around. You may be the type of dude that produce violence and they say, oh, this joker right here would do this and that to you so we don't need him arrest, so they'll send a, 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 a fall guy to come, you know, roll up on you. Because in the incident that you get in, this an altercation, you're going up out of there anyway. So then once you go up out of there, even if it's a small incident, once you go up out of there, they can write no say they don't want you back in there at all. So you ain't never coming back. So it's so many games being played in there, man. They has something to do with your life, your existence, your survival. That you got to be in tune to what's going on, man. You got to be in tune to what's going on. So when you walk out of that cell, man, you can't walk out there with no ha, 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 he, 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 laughing and thinking everything is okay because it just not, it, it just might not be okay. It just might not be okay, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a different world, man. That prison world is a different world, man, all together, man. This is why I preach to these young kings and queens. This ain't the life that you want. It is, is not the life that you want. It's, it's definitely not going to be the life that you prepared for. Because nobody is prepared for prison. Nobody. Dudes that's been in prison for a long time and go back down and you know how to function. Because once they got out of it, they got it out of their mind. And they and, and they so happy to be out of it. By the time they go back, man, everything done changed. Things change in prison every day. The rules is different. The people is different. The players is different. The atmosphere is different. Everything is different. It ain't like you can get up out of it and come back in and then you come back in with the same status. It's just like me. I left prison. I've been out now for these couple of years. If I go right back in tomorrow, man, I'm a whole different cat. Don't nobody respect what I did when I was in there. They respect it when I was in there because I was active. I was doing it then. Now I've been out here. I've been domesticated. I've been contaminated. I walk back in there tomorrow. Don't nobody got no respect for me. I got to go get it again. And going getting it again could cost me my life. Could cost me to stay in there even longer. If I survive. It's, it's not what you want, man. It's not what you want. You know, and I know dudes that came out with me, did as much time as I did. And 
uh, around the time that I came, and they back in there, man, and they don't know how to function. They don't know they lost. They lost, man. You know, and um, and the respect that they had is gone. Somebody else got that. That belongs to somebody else now. It ain't yours no more. You got to go get it. But that cost too. Everything in there costs. Ain't nothing in there free. It's cost. It's going to cost you and it's going to cost them. But it's going to have a price on it. So, you know, yeah, man, that's a horrible life, man. Just thinking about it, man, just, <laughs> just talking about it, man. It's just a horrible, horrible life, man, that I'm so blessed and thankful to be out of. So, you know, when you wonder why I smile and I laugh, because I couldn't for so long, man. Because it won't nothing to smile and laugh about. You know, and these dudes in there losing their life. They in there struggling every day trying to live. And I know some of y'all people out there are going to be on the side of where they did what they did. Well, okay, you done did a whole lot of things too that don't nobody know about. Don't nobody know about but you and God. That's it. That's the truth. And you know it's the truth. So, should you be treated like that? Should you have to live like that? Ask yourself that before you judge, you know. But um, it's a terrible life, man. But I, I'm telling you, I'm here to let you know for sure. I don't care who you are, what you, what, what, what color you are, what race you are, what size you are. If you are locked up in prison and you leave that cell, it is nobody that can guarantee you coming back in that cell ever again. Ever again. That is the danger that is prison. That is the danger that is prison. And I know it's like that, like I said, on the streets as well. But I, I can assure you, statistically, is the chances is greater in prison that you will not make it back to where you left that morning. It's very much greater. And people don't know that. They don't understand that because that's not publicized. But it's reality. It's reality. Everybody, when them 84 cell doors open, that's 84 people life on the line. That's 84 people life on the line when them doors open. That's 84. 84 people. Every day. All day. Each time they open. Three, four times a day. You take a chance with your life when you walk out of that cell. You take a chance with your life when you walk out of a cell in prison. That's why when them doors open, a lot of dudes come right to the door and raise their hand and say, close it. They ain't coming out. They ain't coming out. Not now, not the next door break, not tomorrow, the day after, next week. They ain't coming out. They ain't coming out. And guess what? You got dudes in there go knock on your door. Hey, man, you ain't coming out today. No, man, they ain't come out yesterday. I don't come out that much. Yeah, they know that. Just picking. Just picking. Seeing what your disposition is. Seeing what your temperament is. Seeing how humble, how nervous, how scared you are. So, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to go look for the trouble. I told you it's going to come find you. It's going to come find you in prison. This is the environment. This is the nature of the environment, man. So, yeah, man, be aware. Be aware, dog. Be aware. If you got this freedom out here, man, embrace this freedom. Uh, treat it like a privilege, man, because it is. Because there's a lot of dudes that I know personally that would love to have the position that you in no matter how bad you think you got it. I know some dudes that want what you got. I do. I promise you I do. I know some dudes. You think you got it so bad. I know some dudes. You tell them your whole circumstances, your whole situation, and ask them do they want to trade places. And before you can get the words out your mouth, their hand will go up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that. I want that. Yeah, let me get that. Yeah, you take. You take this. Let me get that. Yeah. I know plenty of them. Plenty of them. I was one of them. <laughs> I promise you, I was one of 
Man, I remember when they said, man, they got dudes, they sending dudes over to Afghanistan. And I said, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go to get out of this. I'll go. And I was so sincere. So sincere, man. Please believe me, I was so sincere. You know, at least I felt like I had a fighting chance. You know, I felt, I felt, I may have been wrong, but that's how I felt. Dealing with what I was dealing with. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, man, I know I'm rambling. I know I'm talking about some stuff y'all might don't want to hear about, but, but please believe me. I'm talking facts. I'm talking facts, man. So, uh, anyway, man, stay free. Stay free, man. Uh, stay humble, man. Find you something that you can do, man, that'll keep you on the street and to keep you out of the penitentiary, man. Because it ain't no love in there, man. And it uh, ain't no mercy in there. And your life will be on the line each and every day that you in there. One way or another. Whether you feel it or don't feel it. It's, it's reality. You know. So. Anyway man. Thank y'all for listening to me. I appreciate y'all. More videos to come man. Uh, y'all be safe. Be smart. Make good decisions man. Big love to TBP Nation man. Go tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. We just talking over here man. We just trying to spread this positive energy. That's all we trying to do. That's it. Save some people, spread some positive energy, and keep it moving. So if you with that, they probably with that. You know what I'm saying? You like it, they probably love it. Let's go, man. TBP Nation, stand up. Big love, man. Peace and love to each and everybody out there. Let's go. Y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. And my, 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 boom, boom. Duck that hook and duck that penitentiary. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.